Welcome to a new in the mail, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. We have a selection of different items received in this mailbag, some of them will probably go out as uh, Christmas gifts to friends, some I'll uh, keep for myself. Let's start with this uh, ESP32 S2 development board. This is the official Espressif dev board and uh, this is called ESP32 S2 Saola and it comes in two variants uh, with the UFL connector installed so you can use an external antenna or uh, without the uh, UFL connector installed to use with the uh, built-in antenna which is what I have here so the reason for getting this development board was to play with the USB host functionality on the uh, ESP32 S2 I'm working on a project where I have this uh, USB device that creates a, a virtual serial port over USB and I would love to have that device connected into something like this and uh, create a bridge for that serial port on the local network however as far as I know USB host is not currently implemented in the uh, uh, ESP IDF so I got the hardware but there isn't any software to support it at least not yet my backup solution is a Raspberry Pi Zero which um, I have already tested and it works but it's it's more expensive it uses more power uh, it needs an SD card so I would rather work with something like the uh, ESP32 S2 if they eventually add USB host support uh, and in particular that virtual serial port my next item is a small breakout board for the Holtec HT16K33 which is an LED controller slash driver and this can drive up to 16 segments and 8 commons and its uh, control happens over I2C so imagine how many outputs you gain with just 2 pins required for that I2C bus and it takes care of all of the memory mapping, uh, dimming uh, oh and I forgot to mention it can also do keyboard scanning up to 13 by 3 matrix so quite a versatile little chip uh, it's not very expensive either I was thinking of putting a few bar graph displays in one of my project and uh, this would have helped with driving them like I said with just two pins over I2C sometimes it's just not worth the effort to roll a discrete solution with transistors especially for hobby projects because the cost for such a chip can easily offset the effort of assembling dozens of transistors and resistors and then writing the code to drive them all while wasting a, a huge number of IOs so check out the link to this breakout board which I will place in the description below and if you are interested in getting a professional PCB for your next project let me mention PCBWay.com they offer professional PCBs manufactured at affordable pricing with fast turnaround times they also offer complete turnkey solutions where they handle everything from sourcing the parts to assembling and testing your boards before shipping so you can get them fully assembled check out their website linked below next up I have a few products which sell under the Xiaomi brand in China they're not necessarily branded Xiaomi what I have here because they come from the OEM but if you've tried these uh, Xiaomi products before you probably realize that they're pretty good value for money and pretty decent quality for example I already have one of these e-paper thermometer slash humidity indicators in my bedroom but I'm thinking uh, I should either add a second one in the living room or maybe I'm gonna make this a gift to a friend I will decide later I have already given a bunch of these as gifts to friends and family they all love it and it's been running on the original batteries ever since they were installed and they're really energy efficient due to this e-paper display technology there's a known issue though with these where uh, you might get a low battery indicator right from the start and that's an easy fix you have to remove the uh, back cover and uh, you need to put a slight bend in the metal battery contacts and ensure it's pressed firmly on the coin cell battery I suspect this issue is caused by that small insulating a uh, plastic paper or paper tab that they use for shipping and storage uh, the one that you're supposed to uh, remove from under the battery uh, to start using it I guess that puts too much pressure on the contacts and when you remove it it's it's a little loose on the battery contacts and I recently ordered uh, the pro version of that display this has a feature that I've always missed in the smaller one and that is the clock display 
since I'm keeping uh, this one in my bedroom next to my bed it would be nice if it would also have a clock so this bigger version can do that and also has Bluetooth connection for sync with a PC app not sure I'm interested in the uh, syncing option it could be useful for syncing the clock but other than that I don't think I'm gonna use it but I definitely want the clock display and the best part about this is that it's still an e-ink display and it's still running on CR2032 batteries so let me open this up so we can get a closer look so this is how it looks let me put it next to the original one I mean it's it's just the perfect size it's it's very compact so it's not going to be taking a lot of space on your desk or wherever you need to place them but the aspect ratio of this font to the body of the device is very good and you know it's ink display it's gonna be really clear even in a very low light conditions and what I notice here on the display is that we get a temperature indication we get the humidity and I also see something uh, PM 2.5 so this is the uh, particulate matter in the air I'm not sure if this can measure that itself or if maybe it gets that from the phone app and you need to have a separate sensor for that but it's nice to know that uh, there might be a possibility for that and with this one you do not get the uh, cradle for putting it in, in, a, in a cradle like you used to get with the old one for this one you get three options so you get this small leg that you can glue on the back and uh, it will support this you can get a magnet and you can stick this to a fridge for example or just a simple double-sided sticky tape and you can glue this to uh, a wall or some piece of furniture for example so let's try to pull this battery tab okay so this was under both of the uh, batteries inside and it's turned on no information about the uh, particulate matter but we do get the clock the temperature and the humidity now obviously I'm gonna have to install the phone app and sync the correct time with this and possibly figure out what sensor do I need to also get that indication of uh, PM 2.5 particles Next up also something which I believe sells under the Xiaomi brand but the one I got it's from the OEM next tool and this is a multifunction flashlight and it probably ticks most of the boxes for gimmick features. Uh, I tend to get that feeling with these multifunctional flashlights but if it's built well you kind of start to see the utility. So let me unbox this so we can get a better look. So the unboxing experience was uh, pretty nice they obviously uh, spent some time and thought about the packaging of this product and this is actually bigger than uh, I was imagining uh, actually I don't know I was imagining this would, would be half the size of it actually is so let's start with the construction of this uh, we have this aluminium body it's uh, probably 200 grams in weight IPX4 rated which means uh, there's protection from splashes uh, the internal battery I've seen that mentioned as an 18650 2600 milliamp hours let's see if that's mentioned on the box well the capacity is mentioned but not the type of battery and judging by the size of this it could probably also fit something like a 2650 battery in there so I'm not sure if it's uh, really an 18650 but you know 2600 uh, milliamp hours it's just right for an 18650 battery and uh, that's not user replaceable as far as I can tell um, this piece is a uh, plastic which holds the magnets and this can rotate uh, around the flashlight allowing you to position this in whichever way it's best for you then you got the main light output which is at this end with a projector lens and this is uh, zoomable this will have three intensity modes and on its brightest setting this is capable of up to 1000 lumen outputs and it will give you 2.5 hours of runtime in this highest setting 
The secondary light is this uh, diffused one on the side of the flashlight and this also has a few modes and on its brightest setting is capable of up to 200 lumens and it will give you 4 hours of runtime in this mode but it can also turn on red at 6 lumens and give you 24 hours of runtime in this mode so this could uh, be really useful for those uh, sec secret ops missions that everyone tends to do once in a while but the feature list doesn't stop here because the uh, flashlight also has this alarm function where it will flash the lights and beep loudly and there are uh, magnets in here so you could attach this uh, to metallic surfaces there is um, a USB type C 5 volts input for uh, charging and the USB type A power bank output which is capable of 5 volts 1 amp not much but it might help you in an emergency situations where you really need to charge your phone so although it's full of gimmick features I think they're pretty well implemented with a high quality construction so it's uh, it's definitely something else and I quite like it even this uh, you know this uh, bracelet for carrying it it's, it's made of silicon rubber so it definitely feels premium I think I'm gonna keep this one in my car and uh, I will also definitely be taking it with me when I go camping as usual there will be a link to this in the description below so check it out here is an interesting gadget I accidentally discovered on Aliexpress this is a magnetic PCB holder for your work workbench it has this magnet on the bottom that you can attach to uh, some metallic base and then you have this sliding piece that you can insert a PCB in here and it will clamp it they include a couple of uh, rubber pads in the package so you can attach these to the surfaces so they will not scratch or short anything on your board and I quite like the design of this it's uh, simple it works and by screwing this piece further down you put more pressure onto the spring so the clamping force is stronger but the big issue with this design is that most people don't have a magnetic surface on their electronics bench to attach, attach this to. Myself, I was imagining that I would be attaching this to the uh, base of my microscope, uh, which I thought it's magnetic, but upon checking, it seems that it is not. So I'm gonna have to purchase some kind of magnetic base to use this, and I'm afraid um, I will be paying more for shipping than uh, the product itself will be costing getting it from China because it will be heavy and uh, it, you know shipping is going to be as expensive. So I'll have to figure out uh, if I can find something nice locally that I can use as a base for attaching this. Next I got myself one of these small tiny hammers. It's probably under 200 grams and uh, it has a hard metal head and also a softer plastic head. And having such a small hammer can be useful when doing precision work, uh, a watch bracelet repair, some jewelry repair, stuff like that where you need precision and a bit of force applied to something. And I recently had to adjust the length of on a watch bracelet and I couldn't insert the last few millimeters of a safe, safety pin. So something like this would have helped a lot. I think I've shown this style of uh, small clamps in a previous mailbag video and back then I ordered another set because they're just so useful around the workbench and personally I haven't seen these uh, these smaller sizes available at the local hardware stores and I use these for holding boards for holding wires in a test setup you name it they are universal and they have this uh, very strong clamping force they have a strong spring in there and if you don't already own a couple of these do yourself a favor and get some you will certainly find the use for these uh, at your workbench. Next I got a few more uh, tiny UFL coaxial cables for my Nano VNA. I have a couple of different styles in here. These are just 10 centimeters long uh, UFL to UFL pigtails while this other one is like an extension on one end it has the uh, PCB type UFL soldered to it while on the uh, other end it has the standard uh, UFL connector so these uh, could be mated one to each other and I, I also have this uh, popular UFL to RP SMA pigtail uh, this is like the stuff that you'll find in your uh, wireless router well I don't think they do that anymore these days they're just soldered uh, but you used to find these in wireless routers 
And this is a uh, somewhat strange adapter, but I got it anyway. It's an SMA male on one side and UFL on the other side. So instead of having a pigtail, which adds its own losses in the transmission line, this adapter is very short and contained within this uh, small plug. Next up, a small neodymium magnet hanger. And this is just a small one, it's probably like 15 or 20 millimeters wide, which is probably only capable of holding something like 500 grams, maybe up to one kilogram, depending on the surface you attach it to. But you can also get much bigger ones. If you have metal shelves like I have here in the lab, you can use this uh, to hang something on the rails of the shelf. And this is a set of uh, three millimeter inner shaft diameter pin type bearings. If you remember my video about the Metal Gear extruder upgrade which had this low cost construction where they used the 3mm screw as a shaft for one of these bearings and the, the threads on that screw were grinding away metal inside the bearing. Uh, I'm gonna link that video on screen right now. Well I'm also doing that upgrade on my uh, newer Ender 3 printer and I have already ordered a, uh, a set of this uh, metal extruder and it seems like it's a newer revision but it still has uh, that uh, three millimeter screw in here. Well, this one is already fixed because I went to a uh, local CNC shop and uh, it, the guy there manufactured the shaft to be exactly the correct size uh, to replace that three millimeter screw that they use. But what I wanted to show is that it seems this is a newer revision because if you look at the teeth on this uh, uh, wheel, uh, they are angled so they will not bite into the uh, aluminum holder anymore so it seems like they revised this wheel but they they're still using a three millimeter screw in there but not to worry i fixed that at the cnc shop and i've also got some replacement bearings just in case and my last item in today's video is this uh, tiny breakout board for the famous hc595 shift register the operating principle is pretty simple with four input pins uh, you shift data in and you can drive the eight outputs on this shift register. And I actually always have these chips in stock in, in various packages they are used in, in various projects or for repairs. However, last time when I needed to quickly test something and drop one of these uh, shift registers, I didn't have a breakout board and I didn't have any suitable uh, breakout board for that footprint either. So uh, I fixed that by getting myself a bunch of universal footprint breakout boards which I showed in a previous mailbag as well as this uh, breakout board for the HC595 itself and the fun part is that I got this shipped to me for the grand total of 71 cents which is unbelievable and that special offer is not available anymore but you can still find it uh, pretty cheap and I think this is a useful uh, building block to keep in your stash. That was all for today. Same as always, you will find links for all of these items in the description below the video. Check them out and let me know in the comments if you found anything interesting to order in this video. If you want to support the channel to help me produce more content like this, you can do so on Patreon with as little as $1 per month. On screen I will place a link to a uh, playlist with all of my mailbag videos so you can check them out. Thank you for watching and don't forget to smash that like button to show your support for the channel. See you next time.